it's a universal thing. People people want toast. Well, in the app, are you talking about for this Intune migration thing? I'm talking about for breakfast or, or a snack. You no, know, golden browns, crunchy butter. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we have a pretty big update to the Intune migration solution that uh, a lot of folks have been asking for. Probably because I teased it two months ago, but, you know, I get busy too. So, here we go. I guess we could put toast in this thing too. Okay, so during our whole migration solution, um, there are several points where we want to notify the user of things going on. And during things like the device, the first reboot, you know, that's fine. Uh, Windows automatically does this, but kind of the big deal is things like file migration or we're getting things ready. So how do we do this? How do we let the user know? So this is a test machine that's um, it's been migrated, but I'm just gonna fire a sample for you. This is something we wanna be able to put in the script. Um, so I'm gonna start by showing you the end solution. So we can use this when, here, let me just uh, PowerShell, exe, execution, uh, ex execution, gotta give it a spell policy bypass and we got C program data into migration toast okay check this out so we can queue this up to run whenever we need it to so in this example take a look at that sample I got some silly stuff whatever but look at this we got the little loading icon it's migrating files and then we could easily dismiss that by hitting whatever. Let's see that one more time. This is a toast notification. Most people are familiar with these, but check that out. So I know what you're thinking, Steve, no big deal. I've made a toast notification. I know how to do them. Um, the issue we've run into is it's actually very difficult to orchestrate toast notification as a uh, running something in system, which most of the solutions we write do run a system. And if you've been following the series, you know that's what we're doing. So it's been kind of difficult to do. So let's go ahead and talk about how we did it here because we do have it um, running a system. I found two great um, resources online. I'm going to put a link to below. And um, this should allow us to integrate them into the solution and um, you know, really just, uh, uh, let's stick with the in place, really just kind of make these where we want. You know, there's a few places I'm gonna put in here, but you're welcome to notify whenever. Um, so pre-migrate, um, we're actually gonna make a new folder for now. And we're gonna call this, uh, let's just make the file and we'll figure out where we wanna put it later. So toast, toast.ps1. Let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, great. So how do we make this work, right? Um, so we're gonna use um, we're gonna use two modules that allow us to construct our toast notification and to run it um, from system. All right. So what we're gonna do because we're working with multiple modules is we are going to do an array for these two modules. And in fact, we could always change this in the very beginning, pre-migration or start migrate script to uh, just run, put these in at the beginning, right? So uh, we need the burnt toast module, which is for making toast notifications. And we need the run as user module. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit in a second. So let's do a for each, uh, for each, let's say module in modules we'll take some action there um why don't we start off by um you know what? i'm not going to write host this time around because we're going to end up integrating this into a um a larger script so for each module in modules we're going to say the installed variable is equal to get installed module name is module okay so if a module is not installed 
we'll do it our usual try catch. Try catch. And then we'll do an else down here. Oh, else. All right, so that's kind of some basic framework. So if the module is not installed, we'll try to install it. Install module, name, module, uh, confirm, false, and force that. And we'll import it. Catch will create a message. That'll be the error. And we'll just write host out. Write host module could not be installed. And we'll pipe out the, the error uh, message. Okay. Um, yeah, if it is installed, we'll just import the module already. All right, so that should take care of those two modules. So move down here. So how does this work? So in order to construct um, a toast notification, we have this uh, new burnt toast. Oh, did it not? Uh... No, actually, let's run this because I don't think this is... Um... Oh, you know what? This might not work because I'm not in an elevated session. So let's go ahead and do these... Uh... Elevated first. Yeah, leave me alone. Thank you. Thank you for leaving me alone with that nonsense. Uh, we could just copy all this, actually. And uh, there we go. Let's run that. That is such a pain. Because we are doing an if it's not installed. We need an error action. Continue here. That should be all good. So we should now be able to say import module run as user import module uh, burnt toast. Okay. So if we wanted to do a um, let me show you this real quick. If we wanted to make a toast notification, this makes it very easy. New burnt toast notification. We could give it some text and we can call it, hey, all this is a notification. So we can just run that. And look at that. We got a little notification there. Pretty easy, right? But check this out. I want to... Let's do this. See, PS tools, PS exec, IS, PowerShell. Now we're going to run a system. I'm going to do the same thing. New burnt toast notification text. Hey, here's another. Oh. Hey, here is another notification. Ooh, access is denied. But we're system. The way Windows works with Toast notifications is we cannot execute them as system. Now this has been a problem, and in the past when we've tried this, we were able to take one PowerShell script, set a task to run in user context that runs another to trigger this. The problem with that is then that script can't go back and modify things because it's only running in a user. So it's not a great solution, and we really didn't make much headway with it. Um, but take note of the other module that we installed the run as user module. So what does that do? So with run as user, we are able to go ahead and say, um, well here, you know what? Let me open this up as the system. So who am I? Can make this a little bigger. I'm still the, I'm still the system. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same command, right? Um, so let's do this. I'm going to do what's known as a script block, which is literally just that. It's a block of PowerShell. And I'm going to do the same thing. New burnt toast, burnt toast, notification, 
uh, text um, is going to be this is a notification. What's the problem here? Oh, no at. There's no at for a script block. My bad. Okay, so new burn notification test this notification. Same thing we did, only instead of just running it, I'm going to do invoke as current user script block. I will pass my script in and I will tell it to use Windows PowerShell. Use Windows PowerShell. Now watch this. Same thing. Oh, it worked this time as system. That's what the run as is going to do for us. So it seems like we've gotten around this. So now let's get into how we can start putting this together. So the first thing we're going to need is our script block. And we could do more than just single lines of, of uh, text. So we want a few things in our notification. So let's bounce back real quick and take a look at that, um, how it actually looks. Uh, so if you take a look in the, in the right, you're going to see a few things. You're going to see the big image. That's the GIF. That's the hero image. We have the logo image. We have a title. We have the actual text. We have some status of the bar down here and we have our dismissal button. Um, so these are the different areas we can modify and they all come neatly packaged in this burnt toast thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our, our toast notification. So I'm gonna make the script block. And the first thing we're gonna do is, well, let's list all the things we're gonna do. We're gonna do a header. We're going to do our text. We're going to do a button. We're going to do uh, a logo image. We're going to do um, a hero image. That's that GIF. And we're actually gonna do a progress bar. Um, so let's take a look at everything we're gonna do here. So the header is gonna be a new BT header. They give us these actions within the within the script. Um, so we don't we don't actually need this. There we go. BT header with a title of zero touch migration. The text is going to be um, your folders and files are being transferred. Sit tight. The button we're going to do is going to be a new BT button. It's going to be content is going to be dismiss with a dismiss parameter. That's just literally tells the notification to go away. Now the logo. So we're going to have to dump two files into our um, local path, which is this program data in tune migration. So we'll dump the actual logo image and we're going to go ahead and dump the hero GIF as well. So I'm going to put these where the rest of the stuff goes. Um, program data in tune migration. Um, we can make a new folder for them called toast if we want to keep it tidy. Um, I haven't really decided yet how we're going to organize this, but we'll call that logo.jpg. That's the file we're using. And the hero GIF will be the same path. Toast hero GIF. Okay. Um, and the progress bar, they have a function for that too. It'll be a new BT progress bar. Um, the status of it will be called copying files and it'll be indeterminate. We're not really measuring for anything. It's just a, a wait, right? Um, because Windows will notify us because we're doing a restart at the end of that. So we can leave that as indeterminate. And then finally, we're going to we're going to run that new burnt toast notification. And we're just going to snap these in. The text is going to be equal to text. The uh, app logo is going to be the logo. The header is going to be the header. The hero image is going to be our hero GIF. Our button is going to be the button. And the progress bar is going to be our progress. And that's it. And then now to run this, because we're a system, we're going to do the invoke as current user script block will be script block 
and we're going to use Windows PowerShell. Um, okay. Now you can put this together yourself and then you can try it out. What we're probably going to do, um, and the way I'm probably going to do it in the repo, which will be up, uh, should be up later today is let me, let me grab the following here, open folder. So what I'll probably do is in the start migrate, um, because we're actually going to be doing that one pretty soon. I'm probably going to throw it there. So I might wait until we get the new star migrate thing. But in the beginning, when we dump all those package files, I'll probably just add two lines, right? I'll probably just add uh, logo.jpg. Um, and I'll probably add um, hero.gif. We still have some work to do to put this in, and we're going to think of a few other places to put this. I know in the pre-migrate script, there's going to be a great option there. But I just want to show you how we got around the system limitation to you know, customize our Toast notifications. I'm going to put the script we worked on today and its file up in the V2 as Toast example or something, so you can start playing with it. And obviously you can put in your own logo. You don't have to use the get Rubix one, but this will give us a good idea to start figuring out where we want to add these and how simple it is really now that we have the, the run as. Um, stay tuned.